In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create 3D models from your SVG designs in three simple steps. Now, it doesn't matter which program you use. I'm going to show you this using Inkscape and also Xtool Creative Space. But you could also use Illustrator, Coral Draw, and Affinity Designer, or any program that will let you export a solid filled SVG such as this. Now in Inkscape, we just need to make sure under Objects and Fill in Stroke that we have a solid fill and no stroke. Then all we need to do is go to File and Export. And in the Export dialog, we just need to make sure that this is Inkscape SVG. Then we just need to click on this choose a file location. I'm going to call this one box and just make sure this is SVG and click save. And that will be the file ready to import into the 3D software. Next, using Xtool Creative Space. Again, we need to have each part separate and for them to be on an engrave layer, just so it's a solid fill. And from there, we just need to go to here, file, export as SVG, and give this one a name, save as SVG document, and click save. And that will be that file ready to go to import into the 3D software. Okay, so the 3D software we're going to use is called Blender, and you can find that at blender.org. Once here, you just need to click on download, and if you're on Windows, we click on download Blender here. If you're on Mac OS or Linux, click on this and download the relevant version. Then install and open. Once in Blender, we just need to go over to this panel here. And if we come down here, we just need to click on this one here, which is Scene. And we can set up a, a unit system. Now we can choose metric, and we can choose meters, kilometers, centimeters, millimeters. I'm going to choose millimeters, but you can also choose imperial. And down here we can choose inches. But for me, I'm going to choose metric and put the length to millimeters. And if we select this cube by clicking on it, you can see it has a dimension of 20 millimeters by 20 mil by 20 millimeters. If you don't see this panel, you can press N in this window and it'll appear. And we just need to make sure it's on item. Then we can select the box and just click delete. From there, we just need to go to File and Import. And down here, we've got the SVG option. So if we select that and browse to where our file is, we can just select it and choose Import SVG. And if we zoom out by using the scroll wheel, you can see it's brought in our box. Now, if you hold the middle mouse button and move around, you can see it rotates. But if you hold shift and use the middle mouse button, you can pan. And using the scroll wheel, you can zoom in. Holding the middle mouse button, we can move about and using shift and using the scroll wheel. Now, this is actually a very flat object. It's not actually 3D at the moment. So all we need to do is click on one of the parts, then right click and click on Adjust Extrusion. And if you move your mouse, it'll start going up. Just click and it'll be done. Now at the moment, it's really, really big. So to adjust that, all we need to do is go back to this item menu and in the Z properties, just choose three millimeters. And if we just zoom in again using the scroll wheel, you can see we now have a 3D object. So we just need to do the same for each part, which is left click to select, right click and left click adjust extrusion and use your mouse to go left and right and it'll enlarge. If we do that for each one, it doesn't matter what size it is. We can just right click adjust extrusion and there we have some 3D models. Now we just need to go to this panel and type three millimeters on the Z axis 
for each of the parts. Just like that. Now, these are not actually a 3D mesh at the moment. They are extruded curves. So what we need to do is just drag a box, left click, and then right click on them. And if you go down to convert to, we can convert to mesh. Now they are 3D objects. And from there, we can actually assemble this. So the easiest way to assemble this is with using this cursor here. So if we zoom in on an object, such as this back part, and up here, we just need to make sure that this option is on, turn blue, and in the drop down, just make sure it's on median and vertex. It just helps us with alignment. So we can move this cursor like this. All we need to do is hold shift and hold the right mouse button. And if we move around, once we get close to some parts, it'll snap to vertices, which are on the corners. So if we go down to this bottom corner here and then let go, if I zoom in, you can see that this cursor is now located on the corner of this back part. And what we need to do now is select this part and go to Object, Set Origin, and Origin to 3D Cursor. Now we can move it from that position in any axis. And using the rotation on the item menu, we can rotate an X. And if we choose 90 degrees, it's now standing vertical. So for this, I'm actually going to position this at zero, zero, which is right here. So under location, we can choose zero and click enter. Y zero and X zero. And that's moved it right to this point here. And if you ever find yourself that you don't know where you are, you can always either select a part in here, come over this window and press the period key on your number pad, and that'll zoom in. Or you can select a part in the window and press the period key, and it'll zoom in again. So we have our first piece in position. The next one, I'm going to come around to this back, and I'm going to choose the base. And for this, we want one of these parts here to be located here. So I'm actually going to choose this point here. It doesn't matter which one it is really. If I zoom around using shift and the middle mouse button, we need to hold shift, hold the right mouse button again, and just wait until you get over one of these points and it'll snap. Then let go, select the part again, and go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now we can actually move this and because we have snapping on we can select it by this middle part and once we start to go over parts it'll start snapping. So if we zoom in all we need to do is get it roughly where it needs to be and then it'll snap to the right position just like that. Sometimes you might find yourself snapping to the back. All you need to do is get into a position where you can see better and move it about, just like that. And another thing we can do is if we select a part and go down here to the material, we can select the material and this material here is applied to each part we have. But to make it unique, we can click on this number 10, and then we can click on this diffuse color and change the color, and then click off. Now that helps when we come to look and check to make sure everything fits correctly. But now I'm going to do the same with the front and left and right. So 
what I want to do now is I want to snap it to one of these points here. So I'm going to actually go underneath, scroll around, and I'm going to choose this point here. We could choose this, 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 anything on this side really. And with it selected, again, just go to set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And if I come right round, just clicking off, we can now rotate on the X axis and go to a minus 90 position. And zooming in and rotating, we can click and drag and then get it somewhere close, just like that. And because we have the red base, we can now have a good look and see that everything's looking good. If you don't see colors, you can also come up here and we can change from a wireframe or viewport shading. And then we have another viewport shading and then rendered shading. But we're just going to leave it on viewport shading. And then I'm just going to do the last two parts. So I'm going to go underneath, right click and select, and then just go to objects, origin, origin to 3D cursor, come back round, rotating on the Y, this time 90 degrees. And we just want to lock that into position. And now you can see the sides are looking good as well. Here. And I'm just going to do the last side. I'll just go underneath. Select this point. Object, set origin. Origin to 3D cursor. We can actually drag that one over. And if you find yourself you're a bit too far out or it's not scrolling in, just press the period key with any item selected and it'll zoom in on it. I'm going to go minus 90 and lock that into position. And there we have a finished box. But again, we can select one of these sides, go to the materials properties, click on the number nine to make it unique, and then choose a different color such as green. And if we want the same color for the right hand side, we just need to select it. Instead of clicking this number here, we can actually choose this drop down and choose one of the previous material colors, such as this green here. And then we can go around and double check that everything fits properly and nothing is intersecting. Because you might find that if I just move this one up, what you might find is if, if it's not perfectly aligned, you'll get this viewport shading here. So you can see that there's a problem. But if we just drop that back down, make sure snapping's on, we can see that everything is perfect. So you can see this is a great way to check your drawing is correct before you even cut anything out. This saves waste material and time. It might be a little bit tricky at first, but once you've got the hang of it, it's really quite easy. And if you want to follow along, I'll leave a link to this drawing on my Design Find store, where I've got hundreds of items, and there's literally something for everyone, so please check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.